The Darlin Banks is a nature reserve located in the Medway County and is maintained by the Kent Wildlife Trust. The Kent Wildlife Trust is a charity founded in 1958 by the parent charity, the Wildlife Trust, and is headquartered at the Thailand Bon in Maidstone. The manager responsible for the Darlin Banks is Alison Reuter, a reserve warden for the Kent Wildlife Trust. Before this was public open space and owned by the council, it was owned by the War Department that was the forerunner of the MOD. Um, and it was used as during the First World War as a um, practice training ground. And these were um, practice trenches. One of the most notable features about the Darling Banks is the amount of fencing spread throughout the area, spread throughout the reserves. Um, so effectively what we're doing is we're putting in new uh, wooden parts and reusing the metal. The wood is made from chestnut, um, which is a type of tree that grows once it's been cut it grows again and you get multiple stems, we call it coppicing. It's really important for wildlife. So the woodland that I was talking to earlier on, Potter's Wood, we've been cutting the chestnut down in the winter because the young growth is good for nesting birds and it's good for wildflowers. And then we take the chestnut and we bring it here and the bigger pieces are used as strainer posts, which are the bit at the end that you strain the wire on. The smaller bits are split in half and we put points on them, drive them in the ground and put the fence up. So the chalk grassland is being supported by the woodland and it's all part of the same living landscape and the products move around the living landscape. So if it's a charity it saves us lots of money because we can make our own products. Um, but it also means that the woodland has been used the way it should be for wildlife and sustainably to produce fencing materials. The Darlin Banks is home to a wide variety of wildlife, including butterflies, moths, lizards, and slow worms. The, the fencing uh, for this reserve are actually created in order to transport uh, local cattle within the area. Uh, so these are Sussex mostly. There's four ginger ones that are Sussex, so there's a local breed cattle, beef cattle. They're quite young, um, but they do very well on chalk grassland because they they come from Kent, Sussex, that area. Um, they're very calm and they're very placid, so they're great around people that might not be used to being around them. The, the old girl behind is a Welsh black. She's the last of my original cows. She's about 16, 17 now. Um, so she just sort of shows them what to do and tells them when it's safe and when it isn't so that they can they can be calmer around people. They hold their weight really well on this, what could be considered to be quite um, poor grazing commercially, but they do really well on it. And it's great, they'll target this thicker grass here and that gives us the space in between um, like these bare areas where the smaller, finer, rarer plants germinate and set seed. <clears throat> so without them taking the rough grass off, we would never get the smaller plants to come through. They've been through all the paddocks, they've met all the dog walkers, you know. The Darling Banks is also home to unique plant life including cowslips, chalk grasslands, as well as the unique br brushes or scrubs. This little section through here was what they called the, the locals called the butterfly bank and when they walked through the scrub through this path you went through scrub and you popped out onto this little bank here and they called it the butterfly bank because it was the only bit of sort of chalk grass and left and there was lots of blue butterflies were all on here feeding on the last of the chalk flowers and we've managed to expand it um, to encompass everything you see and now we get butterflies right across the reserve so we've gone from having three or four acres maybe of, of grassland left on here to having something like 45 acres of grassland on here. So we've managed to expand and, and repair a large percentage of the grassland. And that section where we've just moved the cows into where they're doing some summer grazing, this area is just starting its, its journey. But the rest, this has been sort of 15 years and that down there has been about 10 years. This section here, this was scrub. So woodland, young woodland like that bit below um, last year or 18 months ago. And we had a contract 
we had some money from a grant and a contractor came in and cut all the, the scrub down to give more space for the, the wildflowers because that's the priority here, it's the um, chalk grass and plants, they're the ones that are most um, threatened. So um, most of it got either taken away and used as firewood or it got burnt up but there are some bits that didn't and we've basically been going around, because it was so dense and so thick and there was so much timber, we've been going around piling it all up into sort of habitat piles. So we get a lot of um, reptiles here, so common lizards, um, slow worms, so it just creates spaces for them to hide in. But it was cleared 10 years ago, but the scrub creeps in and invades from the bottom. So this lower bit scrubbed over first, if that makes sense. Yeah. So although it was cleared 10 years ago, and this was cleared five years ago, this only had say 10 year old scrub on it so there was more light for longer and the plants survived for longer whereas down there the scrub is 30 40 50 years old so it's had that much longer being shaded so it takes that much longer to restore the seed bank's still there things are really amazing things are popping up all over the place we're getting the man orchids coming back and the mouse ear hawkweed and all the other weird and wonderful little chalk specialities so they were there in the soil waiting um, but it's going to take a little bit longer before that looks this one took say it only took 10 years down there um, it's, it's about another five or ten years behind this, I would have thought. So. But difficult, you can't really tell what Mother Nature's up to, you can't.